In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <coughs> Our Lady, Mother of the Word Incarnate, Saint Joseph, Saint Andre Bisset, our patron saints and guardian angels. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the church's liturgy, we continue from the epiphany until the baptism of our Lord to, you might say, the Gospels highlight different other epiphanies of our Lord. And every time he worked a miracle and cured someone of an affliction, you know, it manifested his divine power and glory and attracted more attention to him and that his ministry was different than others who had come before him because he cured people without even invoking God by just saying, be cured and be healed. But also he manifests his epiphany in the fact of our Lord's preaching. His preaching was so powerful because he was God who was preaching and his truth that he preached was so convincing that it also manifested God's uh, presence among men. And that is what the church today is, as um, in the meditation that we had yesterday during Holy Hour from St. Peter Julian Amard, talked about how the church is also in the world today uh, like the star at the uh, Epiphany, like the uh, all the other visible things that our Lord used in his when he walked uh, in his physical presence on earth and preached that uh, the church is his is his vehicle, it's his sacrament that makes visible Christ because Christ is still here. He is in his church, it is his mystical body, and is still doing his work. And when the church teaches, we hear Christ speaking through the church. And so this is why we have, we might say that the people who lived at the time of our Lord don't have any greater advantage than we. We both uh, have to, ex to manifest that we both have to um, practice the same supernatural faith to see Christ in his church preaching, teaching, sanctifying. And they had to see in this man who was before them, the Son of God, uh, preaching, teaching, healing, curing, whatever it was, they had to make that act of faith too. And we have to make that same act of faith. Saint Andre Bessette, who uh, was an instrument of God's mercy and healing to people around him, the miracles that he worked also manifested God's presence and glory among the people that he served. Uh, when you think of Saint Andre Bessette, only you can think of how humble he was and lowly. He was a very short man and came from a very humble background. Even in his day, he was a late vocation. He spent uh, time working in the world. He worked even in the, uh, the textile mills in New England. There are people in Fall River area who uh, remember or have heard stories of, of Andre Bessette when he was working in the area how he was a quiet man and did not seem to be anything extraordinary. And it's the way God works. He uses these rather lowly and humble and unassuming figures to do great things because then people can say, really, that is the work of God. He was sometimes uh, so uh, embarrassed, I would say, or humbled by the fact that God used him to work miracles. And he even didn't even use attract attention to himself, he would use the oil of St. Joseph to 
work or many of the miracles that were worked were done through that sacramental. So he didn't even try to attract attention to himself that this was not his work, but God doing it. But one time he was, he had kind of uh, practiced this form of um, uh, way to get uh, people from attracting attention to him. But he'd be kind of, um, kind of gruff, not, not uncharitable, but kind of, of, kind of short with people in the sense that he would not be too um, friendly, and not in a, a, an uncharitable way, but a way to kind of just not to get attention to himself because he knew he didn't want them to uh, fawn all over him or to, uh, you know, show him all kinds of attention because it wasn't him that was the one doing this work. And one time a person was so disappointed and kind of upset with him by the fact that he treated them kind of so coldly, I guess there's a better word, coldly when he spoke to them and dealt with them that they were uh, uh, so distracted that they didn't realize they were cured till later, that uh, they were kind of walking away saying, well, that wasn't very uh, uh, kind of him or why he was so cold. And then they realized that the miracle that they were looking for had taken place and kind of distracted them from uh, from the event. And blessed at that time, Andre Bessette, the brother, the simple lay brother, just walked away and didn't uh, have any uh, attention paid to him. But um, God works in mysterious ways, and Saint Andre Bessette was truly a a man that uh, God used to do a great things, and uh, b built a huge uh, basilica to Saint Joseph, who he was so greatly devoted to. And uh, he uh, truly attributed and did give all the glory to God by his humble uh, mannerism, by his uh, great love for people and wanting to uh, alleviate um, them of their illnesses. He would pray and ask St. Joseph to come to their assistance. So today as we honor St. Andre Bisset, a little epiphany in his own day of God's glory, that this is the way that God can also use us to bring God, God's graces, and to bring and manifest God's love for his people. Let us imitate uh, St. Andre Bisset and allow him to use us in whatever way he so desires and attribute all to God's glory when he does do great things through us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.